Okay, Terry, just to make sure you're following exactly what I'm saying, figured I would throw this out there. So, in terms of the toaster, um, this is kind of where I'd be going with it. Let me switch from uh, standard clay to hidden line. I like to be able to see my edges, and it makes this a little bit more sensible. So... I am all about some editable polys, and with that in mind, I'm going to come in here and grab these edges. Oh, I guess it would help if I actually told it I wanted to work with edges. I've gotten them all the way around. Now, I'm going to use the connect tool to connect those edges. Um, for what I'm doing, I probably want to go with uh four now the reason for that is think of these as the slots for the actual toast and then this is space in the middle and then these are going to be the spaces on the outside makes sense hopefully it does um so i'm going to hit the little check mark to say yay i'm committed to that i'm good to go and then i'm going to switch it up and select all these edges and i'm going to do the connect i'm going to use the settings again it's going to default to what i used last time so i'm going to knock that down to two and it's going to try and average out to whatever would be breaking this up evenly well i don't want that i'm going to push these out a little bit because i want some space in there I want to allow for a good gap for where my toast would go, and then I will hit the check mark to say, yay, I'm good to go with that. Um, now, I'm going to switch to border. Let me see. No, 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 not border. Sorry. Sorry, edge mode. Still in edge mode. And I'm sorry if I'm a little clumsy. I'm jumping between teaching um, Max on the on PC and teaching <laughs> teaching Maya on a Mac so there's a little bit of what am I looking at and you know clicking the wrong thing and then realizing no wrong program so not making excuses just saying I'm not quite always this clumsy jump between programs but when I'm literally teaching them back to back, it throws me a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to grab that, move that over. So now I got that going on, and that's not looking too bad. I'm going to make a few other adjustments. As I was saying, I would give my toaster a little bit of character. I'm going to select all those. I'm going to grab these, and I'm going to be very careful. I don't want to do this because that will shrink it all. I'm, I just want to do it on the X and Y plane. So that's why I'm grabbing that. And this is really me just getting in there. Oh, you know what? Let me back it up. I'm going to plan ahead a little bit. So to make my life easier, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use the extrude. And I'm going to tell it to extrude zero. All right. Now, why in God's name would you do that? Because if you do that, you can say that I've created a new face. So I can then bring that down some. Scale that in some, and then I can do either another extrude or I can do an interactive extrude, which is click this, I can push it out, or I can push it in. And now I have created a nice little gap for me to work with in terms of, oh, look, it's already set up for where the little slidey thing would go. Yes, slidey thing. That's a technical term. Um, I'm going to switch it up and grab all these points up top. And now I'm going to scale it in. See what I did there? Made my life a little bit easier by planning ahead. I could have done this afterwards. Would have taken just a little bit of extra work to get that in there just right. But this, I think, works pretty well. And then now I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. didn't mean to scale. I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to extrude interactively and just push that down. See what it did there? And now, my friend, I have made the holes for my toaster. And if I decided, oh, you know, that wasn't quite far enough, I could always switch to. using my move tool just to make that nice and deep all right so see all that's pretty well done that's not looking too bad and we have just begun now the other cool thing is you've set this up where now you have these little things here so you could 
in essence, if you wanted to make little little footies for this thing, yes. Again, that's a technical term, I swear to you. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to grab that, grab that, grab that, grab that. And I'm going to actually use the bevel tool this time and check it out. So bevel extrudes and scales at the same time. So I'm just going to say, well, I don't want to push them out that far. And I don't want to bevel that much. And just that quickly, I have now created a decent little looking little toaster. And... You know, I've already set that up. I'm going to hit that so I can commit that. Now I'm going to get in here and get a little special with it. Um, no, that's still not going to work because it's not a hole. Oh, Control Z to undo that. Did not mean to move it, just meant to select. Ah, come back here, you goofy thing. There we go. So. Uh, oh, <laughs> I guess it helps if I'm not rolling over onto the mouse pad while I'm trying to do this. Ah, uh, goofy, goofy teacher. So let me grab these edges right here, and I am going to use my chamfer, which is a cool tool because it does all that cool stuff for you. Kind of gives you a nice little edge you can work with. And yes, those are making some three-sided polygons. But like as I said, three-sided polygons are not always a bad thing. So that's pretty cool. And I can jump out of that. And all I'm doing is giving this thing a little bit more of an edge. Just so that if we did want to render something that's going to have some reflections. Like say you're working in a game engine where you want reflections. Ooh, there we go. Now, I have an edge that will catch my lights. So I'm just going through, and again, this is really gonna depend upon the level of detail you wanna throw in there. So same thing I did before. I'm just gonna choose how much I want my edge to chamfer, so. Just a little bit of detail in there. See, and that's not looking too bad, all things considered. Now, the thing over here I was talking about in terms of the handle. Again, easy peasy, sir. Thinking something like this. All right, and again, I'm kind of eyeballing this, but if you want to get specific, this is where I would switch and use maybe this overhead view to make sure that what you're working with will be sized properly and fit in there and looks like it will. So you could bring that up a bit. That's not looking too bad. There we go, and this will help you begin to Make sure, you know, it's kind of scaled okay. Um, I will say, in terms of game models, this is one of those areas where you're going to want to start working on thinking logically. See this back face? If I'm never going to see it, it's not going to be there. It's not something I'm going to see. Then guess what? I'm going to come in here, go to my polygon mode. I'm selecting that sucker. I'm deleting it. Deleting it. Oh. Uh, of course, delete doesn't want to work with me. Delete. There we go. So, um, yeah, it's all about making sure you optimize stuff. So I'm going to select that. And this time I'm going to, again, extrude uh, Zato and say commit. And with that done, I can scale that sucker out a little bit, scale it up a little bit, and this time I will extrude, but I'm going to do it interactively. Not bad. And I can bring that in, bring that in. All right, and I could even go ahead and this time I could bevel it. See, so just different tools you can play with 
to begin to get some detail into your thing. So let me rotate that view a little bit. And now I've got something that looks halfway decent. Oh. Ooh. See, that's what happens. You get ahead of yourself. And you do goofy things like that. So let me do that again. So I'm going to go ahead and bevel it. I'm going to dial that bevel down some. Because I want this thing to be very subtle. This is, this is getting detail-y. But I'm cool with that. Okay. And then I think I took the entire thing out a bit much. So let me do this. I'm going to bring this in some. And if I really wanted to get tricky with it, I'm going to grab just the top ones, push those back a bit, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But now, this kind of matches that a little bit. See the slope of this? So now, what I end up with is this sucker that I can slide into place. Et voila! And now, my friend, you have something that looks relatively toaster like and wouldn't be too hard to just throw some keyframes in there have this thing moving up and down and you would be good to go so hopefully that helps give you an idea of how you could begin to approach something like this and begin to detail it a bit more and hopefully this worked because i'm trying this new recording software and i think it's working but we'll see